Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we're discussing something very, very important. Coming uh, on the 29th and 30th, we have farmers from across the country who are going to be coming to Delhi to discuss more about the ongoing agrarian distress and to uh, shed light on this important issue and this movement of the farmers we have Vijay Krishnan sir who is uh, joining us sir is uh, the joint secretary of the all india kisan sabha the aiks has been instrumental in mobilizing people and the farmers across the country shedding light on the various concerns that the farmers have currently uh, so sir we welcome you to news click and uh, more importantly to begin with uh, i'd like to know about uh, the kind of mobilization efforts that we are seeing across the country and what are the kind of concerns that are f the farmers are coming up with uh, from multiple regions actually uh, the last four years we have seen continuous struggles by the farmers across the country and uh, the all india kisan sabha has been in the forefront of many of these struggles and uh, we have seen the kisan long march in uh, from nasik to mumbai a very uh, historic uh, event which uh, caught the imagination uh, of people across the country and uh, we have seen massive struggles in the state of rajasthan in most parts of north india and uh, also in many uh, states in uh, southern india today we are having uh, for the first time from across the country more than 200 organizations of farmers coming to delhi uh, where thousands will march from four points in delhi to uh, the ramlila maidan and on on 29th and on 30th you have them marching to the parliament so uh, for the first time we also find there's an unprecedented solidarity uh, that uh, this march has evoked earlier we have uh, during the nasik mumbai uh, long march as well as during our rajasthan struggles we have seen different sections of society coming forward in support that is in the uh, during the course of a struggle but even before the march itself a uh, solidarity which is being built up in the name of uh, nation for farmers you have had different sections uh, uh, of the middle class you have the students the youth the uh, teachers scientists artists journalists all of them coming forward in support we for instance uh, yesterday uh, some auto uh, rickshaw drivers they have come in support of the this march so this is something which we have never seen before it is an unprecedented solidarity and we also have the retired soldiers mm -hmm. the jawans coming out in solidarity with this march that is something um, new uh, that uh, uh, which i think is uh, something we have not uh, seen before and uh, that also is an indicator of the kind of struggles that will come in uh, in the future in the near future and uh, the kind of solidarities that we have been able to build over the last four years so of course uh, there is massive solidarity that the march is uh, going to be witnessing and uh, my second question to you is that how does this uh, solidarity translate into you know legislative processes the aiks has also spent a lot of time in putting together certain bills and uh, so the parliament uh, the march towards the parliament in in a sense would it be about sending a strong message to the government to look at this from a legislative perspective as well no actually in the earlier uh, kisan uh, mukti uh, sansad that we had we had a kisan parliament in which two bills one for ensuring liberation from debt and another for ensuring assured remunerative price these two bills had emerged from the uh, kisans themselves as part of uh, our struggle mm -hmm. for the first time probably these two bills uh, such bills had uh, come out of the, uh, a struggle and uh, these were uh, put into the parliament uh, or uh, as introduced in the parliament as uh, private member bills in the rajya sabha by the uh, kisan sabha joint secretary comrade k k ragesh and in the lok sabha by uh, raju shetty member of parliament from maharashtra raju shetty had earlier contested as part of the nda he came out of the nda against the betrayal of the modi uh, government and uh, betrayal of farmers by modi government and uh, he has joined this all india kisan sangharsh coordination committee so this uh, bill, these two bills are something which the all india kisan sangharsh coordination committee 
uh, through the Kisan Parliament have developed. We have had consultations across the country and uh, uh, based on the suggestions given from different parts of the uh, country by farmers, farmers organizations, we have incorporated that and that is being um, in this uh, march, the Kisan Mukti march, a special session of parliament we are demanding where the agrarian crisis will be discussed, the different aspects of the crisis would be discussed and the solutions for that. And in that, in this particular session, we want these two bills to be passed. That is what we want the political class to actually commit to the farmers in this uh, coming days. Coming to the question of political commitment, so what are the kind of anti-farmer policies that have given more uh, um, energy to this movement of sorts? Because there is a significant, perhaps would you say, is there a betrayal of the farmers by the Modi government? And how has his policies uh, strengthened this movement? No, surely uh, Narendra Modi and the BJP in 2014 when they uh, went into the elections, the kind of promises made to the farmers that um, led to a uh, lot of hopes were, uh, uh, among the farmers. And uh, farmers were promised Achedin, like every other section of society were promised with. They were promised that farmers' suicides would come to an end due to the policies of BJP. They were promised that the Swaminathan Commission recommendation of providing remunerative prices, at least 50% more than the cost of production would be implemented and literally the entire wish list of farming community was promised by Narendra Modi and BJP in their manifesto. Except probably um, land reforms, almost every other issue that uh, would feature on a charter of demand of any farmer organization, that uh, was featured in their manifesto. But uh, once they have come to power, they have systematically gone back on each of these promises. Within a few days after coming to power, we uh, from the All India Kisan Sabha visited the agriculture minister and asked them to uh, implement this uh, recommendation of Swaminathan Commission. And he very openly stated that it is just an election time promise. Mm -hmm. Every party makes promises, so these are not to be implemented. And the BJP uh, president said they are Chunavi Jumlas. Mm -hmm. And the government also went to the Supreme Court, filed an aff affidavit saying that uh, you could not implement the Swaminathan Commission recommendation because it distorts the market. So very clearly, from the uh, within a few months, the correct the intentions of this government came out in the open. So uh, in the initial years, in the in initial days, usually the honeymoon period after a uh, government uh, comes in, not many protests are expected. But they went back on their promise even on the issue of land acquisition. They had mentioned that there would be scientific land use policy and no acquisition of land without mm -hmm. consent of the farmers. They brought an ordinance to actually do exactly the opposite of what they had promised. So uh, we managed to build a massive issue based unity called the Bhumi Adhikar Andolan where more than 300 organizations of farmers, agriculture workers, uh, Adivasis, Dalits, fishing community, and uh, forest workers, different sections coming together, and uh, massive struggles we could build against it. There were promises like reducing the costs of inputs, production costs, but um, all input costs have been rising. We have seen how diesel and petrol uh, prices are rising. Prices of fertilizer, seeds have been rising because there is no control over these prices. And uh, similarly, providing uh, credit at uh, uh, very uh, low interest rates. We find while government has made a lot of campaign about the uh, agriculture credit being increased, we find that massive um, loans are being given more to the agribusinesses in the name of agricultural credit. There uh, recently uh, an RTI has revealed that around 615 accounts are get, um, uh, getting about uh, close to 60,000 crores uh, as in the name of agricultural credit. This has been going on for uh, the last four years. So that is the kind of policies this government has been uh, pursuing. When crop losses are there, they had promised there would be insurance 
farmers would be compensated. The Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana has again, it is a major scam. We had pointed it out when the policy was first implemented. So this, uh, in this manner, each of the promises, whatever hopes were raised by uh, Narendra Modi and BJP, they have been belied. So that naturally the farmers are upset and uh, they are out uh, on the streets in protest. Yes. No, of course, because of these, uh, this apathetic political approach, if we may say so, is existing at uh, the level of the national government. So, sir, AIKS has been uh, mobilizing people on the ground. And if you could shed lights or some light on the kind of demands uh, that are there on the ground and just how the impact of these policies have been in uh, the areas that AIKS has been working in. No, one of the uh, uh, main uh, things which we have been able to see hmm. under this government is that the uh, prices of all agricultural pro products, yeah. they, it has been incessantly falling. Yeah. And uh, ever since the um, disastrous uh, demonetization policy, we find um, there has been a sharp fall in prices of all crops whether it is food grains or commercial crops. So this is something which we have been uh, raising in our struggles. And even when the minimum support price is announced, since there has been a systematic dismantling of the procurement mechanism, there is no procurement happening. So let us take the example of paddy, for instance. The minimum support price of paddy, now around 1750, per quintal with the recent uh, announcement. In a state like Bihar or Odisha, Jharkhand, farmers are not getting even 1000 rupees a quintal, whereas the cost of production is much higher than that. So this talk of uh, minimum support price, even while it is not meeting the actual cost of production, even that is at best notional because there is no procurement mechanism. So in, in many states, states like Rajasthan, Bihar, uh, Odisha, one of our struggles is to ensure that there are purchasing centers. Yeah. That itself is not there. Yeah. And this government has also uh, states which are willing to give a bonus over and above the minimum support price. This government is very strongly discouraging them with, uh, from doing that. For instance, the state of Kerala, where there is a left uh, uh, democratic front government, they are providing a um, bonus of about 800 rupees per quintal, mm -hmm. more than the central MSP for Paddy. Yes. But this government has returned to states saying that if you give more than the centrally fixed MSP, then there would be no procurement by the FCI. So that is the kind of approach, anti-farmer approach that the BJP and uh, the Prime Minister has been taking. And uh, speaking of the march, of course, uh, the MSP, the debt being uh, core issues that we're looking at. Uh, apart from that, there are other issues that are also assuming uh, greater importance, like women's entitlement when it comes to uh, the land or even uh, the status of the wives of the farmers. So uh, if you could discuss more about those. Uh, women play a major role in agriculture uh, today. Unfortunately, the uh, government often just does, uh, overlooks their role in um, farming. Uh, and uh, we find even if you look at the National Crime Records Bureau, uh, which looks into the farm suicides, when a, a women farmer commits suicide, that is usually not uh, recorded as a farm suicide. You, uh, and uh, another aspect is a lot of farm suicides that are happening. You have uh, the major brunt of it falls on the widows of those farmers. That is also something which is not recognized. There is no proper compensation. There is no long-term assistance for um, to carry on with the uh, family expenses and so on. This is something which we have been seeing. There is no pension at all. Whether uh, in most of the states, neither for uh, the male farmers also, there is no uh, pension um, that is there, which would effectively address their, uh, at least the minimum needs that are required. With the increasing uh, expenses for education, health, that is also uh, adding to problems. We find food security is a major issue. 
in many parts. States like Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, um, massive malnutrition is something which is happening. Women are uh, often the worst hit in this. Other than, uh, yes, a lot of children die due to it. In Maharashtra, uh, according to a news report, in a year around 21,000 children below five die due to malnutrition. This is such a uh, national shame. Yes. And in all these places, you find the uh, condition of women is extremely uh, bad. We have visited many villages where farmers have committed suicide. We have seen the condition of the women farmers. It is extremely pathetic. While um, many have been dispossessed of their land after the, uh, a, a, due to the agrarian crisis, we also find there is no uh, employment opportunities for them. Even the Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme, an, a, MNREGA, that also is not, a, they are not able to provide um, employment opportunities under that for the women uh, here. So uh, this is something which we have been witnessing. There is rampant migration. They are being forced to work in extremely insecure conditions. So that is a situation uh, which is there. Women are not recognized as farmers. Women are not able to get access to subsidies and uh, loans. These are uh, problems which need to be addressed. So on the march on the 29th and 30th, how big are these demands going to be uh, playing? Like what kind of role will these be playing? And what kind of participation can we also expect from the women as well on the 29th and 30th? No, women uh, in all our mobilizations, a big uh, number of, of them are actually women. Mm. In all the mobilizations, whether it is the uh, Kisan Long March, the struggles in Rajasthan, struggles in Karnataka, in all these you have a massive participation from women. Naturally, these, uh, the issues that we are raising, um, all organizations which have come together, we are aware about the increasing role played by women in agriculture, the kind of distress that a large majority of them are facing. So that is something which has to be addressed. So um, surely in the parliament session, special session of parliament, we would want a special um, discussion on the problems of the women farmers. There have been certain discussions earlier, certain reports which have come forward, but no government has actually taken a special interest in addressing these um, mm -hmm. problems. That is something which we will press for. Other than the uh, women specific issues itself, the um, remunerative prices, uh, ensuring liberation from debt, the issue of uh, uh, cheaper uh, credit, uh, the issue of uh, uh, cheaper inputs, the issue of uh, ensuring that there is pension for far farmers, insurance for farmers. So uh, 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 all these issues, a uh, uh, broad charter of demands would be prepared, which would be announced on 30th uh, at the uh, Kisan, uh, when, uh, the Mukti rally there. So that would be announced. And of course, this is going to be a historic precedent for the movement to come, uh, for, for the future of the movement as well. So what, what lies ahead after this, of course? Um, that is a big question. See, uh, as far as the Kisan Sabha and uh, uh, the organizations which have been taking up these struggles, our uh, intervention has been on the genuine issues of the farmers, the um, life and death issues of the farmers. Um, it has not been necessarily with a uh, immediate consider electoral considerations in mind. However, we have a prime minister and a political party ruling our country, the BJP. The prime minister singularly is responsible for destroying the livelihoods of millions of farmers with the disastrous demonetization policy. They have gone back on each of the promises that were made to the farmers. The farmers had come out in support. A large number of them had come out in support of the BJP in 2014. But uh, these disastrous policies have led to extreme distress to them. So these struggles that we have built over time, we are confident that our struggles will create an atmosphere for their defeat. The Kisans, the Mazdoor, 
the agriculture workers, the Dalits and Adivasis and also the Javans. A unprecedented solidarity has been built. We will together ensure that in the forthcoming elections there is a situation emerges where there would be vote bandi for the BJP. Okay, so you would you say that you're very confident that the kind of social movements that we're seeing, of course the march and other movements that are ongoing, would actually translate into a vote um, to defeat the BJP? Surely, um, uh, from my involvement with these struggles mm -hmm. and whoever has been part of uh, struggles on the ground, there is clearly a trend against the BJP. And it is uh, in the four years of the BJP rule, every section of society has been hit, uh, adversely hit, by the demonetization, by the GST, by the deliberate uh, policies for ensuring corporate pro uh, profiteering. So naturally, they are all coming out in uh, big numbers, in solidarity with our struggles. It is not that all of a sudden sections uh, are just coming out in solidarity. These four years have, um, we say, char sal janta behal. So that is uh, uh, the situation that we are having. Surely they are coming out. And uh, with uh, our involvement in, in, in these struggles, we can say with a certain amount of uh, uh, confidence that these struggles will surely ensure their defeat. And if you had to give like one key message to what comes ahead or uh, one key message or a big takeaway that this march will give, what would that be? No, as far as this, uh, the Kisan Mukti march is concerned, uh, we have, I think, exhausted all our efforts with this government. There have been innumerable efforts. We have petitioned to the government. More than uh, two crore signatures were collected. We have had uh, massive protests earlier on 9th August, the anniversary of Quit India movement, where more than 5 lakh people took part in the Jail Bharo program. We have time and again come to Delhi in protests, but this government has not had the time to even speak to the representatives of the farmers. So today, while we are coming out on the streets again, this is surely, uh, for them it is, I would say, the last nail in their coffin. They have ignored the farmers and the farmers are extremely angry. They have ignored the workers. They have actually um, hindered the uh, interests of the working class. So they are extremely angry with this government. And we have seen in educational institutions across the country, universities across the country, the students, the youth who have been promised um, crores of jobs, they are without jobs. They are extremely angry. All sections are angry. So it is, I, like I said, it is going to be the last nail in their coffin that they ignore these demands. It is only leading to their peril. On that note, uh, we end this discussion. Would this prove to be the final nail in the coffin for the BJP? Uh, thank you so much, sir, for joining us and uh, for this insightful discussion. Thank you.